Thank you for the introduction. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, firstly, I would like to thank Dr. Ayman for this conference and giving us the okay for giving us this wonderful opportunity to be here today, myself and Nipa, to talk about compassionate healthcare for people of determination, where I'll be introducing a new tailored, unique program for people of determination that will um, ease their process when they go to um, their visits at the hospital. So this training is for medical, non-medical employees that, works in, that work in hospitals, and it will ease the life for people of determination and their parents. So just before we go into the program, I want to give you a glimpse about Special Olympics UAE because people tend to link it to sports only where we do more than that. So Special Olympics International is a global organization and I'm sure you've seen um, a lot of competitive events uh, where we have athletes from all around the world competing, representing their country. And yes, it's related to sports. However, there's a lot that we do as well along with those competitions. So um, in uh, 1990, Special Olympics UAE was founded. However, in 2017, it was re-established under the directions of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. And he appointed the honorary chair to Her Highness Sheikh Maryam bin Muhammad bin Zayed Al Nahyan and the board of trustees chair to Her Excellency Shema Al Mazroui, who is also the Minister of Youth. So as I mentioned, we do year round trainings. Honestly, we were yesterday at RAC doing three competitive events for our athletes from all around the Emirates. We had around 110 athletes who were competing in three different sports. Alongside, we had um, screenings that we were doing for our athletes. So we would check on their teeth. We were checking on their feet and they are free of charge. Why are we doing those screenings? Because We've noticed that people of determination tend to find it difficult to um, say where the pain is. They can't sometimes even, you know, tell you where the pain is and they just live with it. Um, we find um, interesting findings that require follow-up care. So at Special Olympics CAE, what we do is that we collect the data that where the screening has been conducted by um, volunteers, we call them clinical directors, who were trained by Special Olympics International. And then we communicate with those athletes' parents to ensure that they go to the uh, doctor and make sure that they are in better health. So we run a lot of initiatives. We do arts for our athletes. We have a lot of family support programs. And then health is where I come from. As I mentioned, we do free screenings that covers eight different disciplines. Um, in addition to that, we have um, doctor's development programs. Um, we do different types of trainings. We do, we do also fitness and wellness programs that covers at least six sessions where we ensure that our athletes can learn uh, new information. And then we're quite active in schools as well. Um, this year we managed to reach to over 500 schools. So a little bit more about health. So healthy athletes. Um, I don't know if you know, but in 2019, we hosted the World Games. So it's an event that happens every four years and Abu Dhabi was the host. So in healthy athletes is where we provide healthy screenings. And from there, we look at the data and we decide what kind of programs we should tailor for our athletes to ensure their health well-being. And then we have health and fitness programs that covers nutrition uh, visits, but it's a holistic program that also includes behavior uh, change. And when we have family health forms where um, we have the parents come in and they communicate with doctors and they cover hot topics based on what we're going through. And then we have the Healthy Community Project, which is um, a big project that focuses on ensuring people of determination have equal access to healthcare. And uh, luckily last year, we managed to get the title in just one year, even though it's a three-year project. And we were at the palace two weeks um, back and honored by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed. 
So the need, what is this program? Why am I here? Why am I talking about this program? As I mentioned, we communicate closely with parents who have kids with intellectual disabilities, with doctors and athletes themselves. And we've noticed through the programs that we've been delivering that um, they keep complaining when it comes to doctor visits from the athlete, not necessarily, but mostly the parents and the doctors. What kind of complaints would you think? So sometimes the doctor would say, I don't wanna see this um, athlete because they don't have the experience. I'm not saying everyone, but some of them. When they studied back in university, they didn't have the experience to treat people with determination. And then for the parents, they call us and they email us frequently asking us, where can I find a doctor with a speciality that can you know, treat my child? In addition, the patient journey. So when the athlete goes to uh, the, the clinic, they are sometimes not ready or the patient interfering staff don't know what to do. So based on this frequent feedback that we've been having, we thought that we should do something about it. And Special Olympics UAE has been working closely with Applied Behavioral Training Institute to come with this unique tailored program. And I'm not the specialist behind it. So for that reason, I'm gonna call Nipa to tell you more about this training, uh, what we're doing in it, and what are some of the solutions that we are providing. I'm short. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for listening. Um, Applied and Behavioral Training Institute has partnered with Special Olympics UAE to design and deliver this healthcare providers training program. Um, that's the solution that we came up with together. We had a few discussions trying to understand the need and trying to tailor something that would cater specifically to the need and to the region. So this is uh, a unique training from that perspective. Because when we first met, uh, our take was that there's lots of trainings out there online available easily where uh, there are a few, lots of trainings available where people can just go in and see what to do. So the what was there, but the why was the part where we wanted to change, uh, bring about a cultural shift when we say that uh, people of determination are having a uh, not, not a so pleasant experience visiting healthcare facilities, um, we, it's not that, that the healthcare facility providers or the doctors or the non-medical staff don't want to do it. We, we, we found that they want to, but they don't know what, what to do at that point of time. And sometimes even if they know what to do, it's just a difficult experience. And, there's so much, so much dialogue about inclusivity, about doing the right thing, that I we feel there's a lot of pressure to do the right thing with not enough support to do it to the people who need to provide this care. So we wanted to bring that compassionate perspective to it, not only compassion to the person of determination, but compassion to the people who are providing the care. And for us to have these discussions within the training where it's where we recognize that it's difficult. The teams can come out in the open and talk to each other, talk to their leaders within their organizations that this is not easy, that there are barriers that need to be removed, there is support that needs to be given. And sometimes it's not going to work and it's okay, as long as we take the first step. So the cultural shift is the most important uh, aspect about this training. Along with that, of course, we talk about the evidence-based strategies, adaptations and applications. Um, changes that can be made within the environment and for the patient and for the healthcare providers. The training is divided in four units. The first one uh, talks about introduction to developmental and intellectual disabilities. Uh, Special Olympics really um, works with four people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So that's where our focus is. Uh, then we talk about evidence-based practices, applied behavior analysis being the evidence-based practice which supports behavior change. 
again, for all, for the patients, for the healthcare providers, and for the caregivers. So there's the principles, we start with the principles and then add to it the strategies and its applications within the environment. And the last part is what we talked about, I just spoke about earlier, is the compassionate care provision for all stakeholders. So it comes together over um, eight hours and people uh, who attend the all eight hours and uh, there's a quiz at the end of every uh, unit. Everybody who uh, attempts the quiz and passes it is uh, awarded nine CME hours. Um, and I think Irene will explain further about the process. Uh, at the end, if you have any questions about the content, I'm here to answer those. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nipa. So as mentioned, uh, medical and non-medical staff working at the healthcare provider can enroll into this training program. And um, once, you find, once you take the modules, uh, we have an accreditation. So it's like a trophy you can place uh, in the hospital that um, gives it an identification being a unified healthcare, which means that a certain percent of the staff working in the hospital is ready to welcome patients who um, have intellectual or developmental disabilities if they um, take this training. So how does this work? We usually communicate with healthcare providers and uh, to give you some numbers, we launched this program last year as a pilot back in April. And uh, through last year, we had 15 healthcare providers, uh, a total of 200 employees were trained of which we have medical, non-medical, and we also include uh, the higher management because you tend to find amazing ideas from the junior staff. However, when it comes to implementation, you would think it would be easier and better if they were involved in this program from the beginning. So the implementation will be easily uh, taken place in the healthcare provider. So you can um, take this training. Any of you can come and take this training. Uh, we'll pro providing more details at the end of how you can enroll. However, if you're interested that the hospital itself where you're working to be accredited, to be a unified healthcare, then based on the number of employees, then a specific number should take this training. So let's say, for instance, HealthPoint, who got the accreditation, they have around um, 700 something employees. So 10% of those employees must take this training. Uh, more than that is acceptable, but uh, we would recommend to have at least 10% of them attending. So training details, the training can be conducted virtually or on the ground. Um, as mentioned, for those with medical background who require to have CME hours, this program provides nine CME hours. And it is free of cost. Last year, it was fully funded by the American Embassy and it provides, as I mentioned, nine CME hours. So here's just a quick video that shows what it would look like if, and this is already implemented in one of the uh, clinics post-training for an athlete, or when I say athlete, it means people with intellectual or developmental disability uh, going to a clinic. So. How can I play this? Okay. Unfortunately, the sound is not working. So here we have uh, one of our athletes who's in the waiting um, area. So at the beginning, if you noticed, um, upon the phone call, they gave her two um, slots. So usually those um, visits take more time. So they made sure that they booked 30 minutes instead of 15 minutes. And here the nurse is just explaining to her what's going to happen. And as you can see, um, they're trying to make it interactive, um, playful, so she doesn't feel scared. She's explaining the equipment to the athlete. 
What is she going to use? Why is she using it? Here we have another athlete. Her name is Moza, and she's just explained to her the process, what they will be doing today. Again, explaining the equipment. Um, she's being uh, more familiar. She's touching it, so she's not scared of it. This is just um, a short example, but during the workshops, you'd be amazed to hear uh, the great ideas that the staff have from medical and non-medical employees. And we look forward to show you uh, the changes that have been conducted in some of those hospitals that we've already trained. So what do you receive um, when taking this training? Um, every uh, person with a medical background, as mentioned earlier, will get the nine CME hours, a certificate, a gift kit, and a plaque if they fulfill the criteria. And then finally here, I would wish to have the sound, um, if you can fix the sound, please, because I wanted to hear some of the testimonials from um, the staff who already took the training. not just to healthcare workers, but, but to all employees, and especially to managers and heads of departments. Being an HR professional, I was thinking in the direction of how this program is not just beneficial for you as a service provider, but also it helps you become an inclusive employer. I think the program helps, trains you to understand, support, and sensitizes you to work with people of determination. And I think this whole comprehensiveness of the program makes it very unique and amazing uh, and helpful practicality of how we could deal or manage and serve our um, patients of special needs in a very effective way and making sure that their experience um, is very positive. So that's number one. Number two is as the leader of the team, it's um, how to take the team forward in terms of how to manage perhaps coming up with new ideas or initiative that would help us as a hospital to be able to support people of special needs in a better way. And I highly recommend this training. There's a lot of conversation and the learning around the concept of empathy and compassionate care with clear, practical, that we can treat and we can deal with our special needs patients. Uh, that was run through a different scenario. People of determination are uh, not uh, really included in our health care system. And I'm very thankful for uh, the Special Olympics to give us this training. We include them in our system. This training uh, shows us that we are not really trained in uh, helping uh, the people of determination. So why I recommend this training? More than 80% of care providers that don't have professional training. So just to add, um, here are some images of, so last year it was a bit of a hassle because we were not allowed to you know, conduct at the beginning of the year so many trainings physical due to the pandemic. However, um, as you see here, we had some physical training and um, online trainings for the 15 healthcare facilities that we um, trained last year. Upcoming trainings, so the beginning of the year, we were uh, fully booked. Um, however, after Ramadan, beginning of May, we do have some slots available for this training. Uh, capacity would be 40 to 50 people per training. If you are interested, and I think you are, um, 
This is the email address where you can contact me and I can communicate with you alongside with the HR or the learning development uh, department so we can sit together and discuss when uh, we can conduct the training accordingly. Um, thank you very much um, for listening. Uh, I also just want to highlight one more thing. Uh, the program is growing. Uh, we have on board Department of Health um, in Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi Public Health Center, Department of Community Development as a partner for this program. Um, inshallah, this month uh, we have discussions with Dubai Health Authority because we have been receiving a lot of um, requests from Dubai. So we are working on getting the um, CME accreditation from DHA. Um, and that's about it. Thank you so much for listening.